Now I want to do some remove before flight tags, but they're dangling down. Right, so for this, all right, what I'm going to do, getting out some locking tweezers just here. Let's maybe sort of, we're going to have to get in kind of close on this one. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pinch the end that we're not going to be gluing. Right, let's bring you in as close as we can get. Uh, for this, I'm going to be using some of our kind of our easy lines. All right, just here. Uh, I'm using heavy, right? And what we're going to do is, I used to in the past, I used to get sort of like lead wire and I'd feed it through the hole and then I'd twist it. But in all honesty, I didn't quite like the look of it. It didn't look kind of natural. So I'm using easy line this time because I think it looks a little bit more sort of natural if we can sort of focus. There we go. And what we're going to do is, we're going to get a bit of our super glue. We're just going to dab this on the end. Now, I'm as you can see, I'm using the uh, locking tweezers so I can actually put a little bit of super glue on the top. I don't want to lay it down on the table because I don't want it to glue to the table. So just a little bit just on the top there. Then we're going to come in with just the end of our easy line. All right, and we're just going to glue this into position. Right, it's probably best to hold it down on the table, but I don't know if you're seeing this quite well. Right, and we just hold it down on there, and then with our spare hand, getting out some vital bond, and then we can quickly spray it. Right, so it basically glues instantly, and we're not holding this down and waiting for it to go off because it's so fiddly and small and everything. Right, we end up sort of, it moves out of position and everything. But there we go, easy line is nicely glued onto there. Um, and what we want to do is, and as you can see, I've left loads and loads of slack here, so we're not sort of struggling. Easy line's kind of pretty cheap and you do get quite a bit of it. Then we want to bring in the model. And this is good for things like our landing gear, right? Because you've normally got it dangling down from the landing gear so just bringing in our front bit of landing gear then we want to sort of select a point where we're going to have this dangling down all right so i might just sort of stick it right into there all right and then this is where we want to sort of you know sort of place this up against the model and sort of guesstimate the height that we're going to be needing just here so we only need like a little bit so i'm just going to now cut that off at a guesstimated sort of height. All right, let's get you on camera a little bit and then we just give that a cut. All right, so we've got a nice little bit of easy line dangling on that. Maybe sort of get it into some tweezers as well just to, to make it a little bit easier. Then, as always, let's get out a bit of super glue. I'm just gonna get a little bit, put it on the end of my um, pot just here. And again, put it on a bit of a cocktail stick. Right, let's get a little bit of that. Place, let's get this in my tweezers first. It's, it's a little bit fiddly. Photo etch is just always fiddly and a little bit of a pain. But let's get a little bit of glue just in here. All right, maybe a little bit of a, a smear on the end of the EZ line. And then again, we want to just hold that in position the way we want it and then with our spare hand grab a bit because as you can see it's just really hard just to hold that in that perfect position but once you've got it in that perfect position a quick spray and a blow and it just glues instantly all right so there it is and it's got that little bit of a dangle to it so if we lift this up it'll just sort of nicely dangle Ooh, clear close it'll dangle sort of nice and freely and i've just broken a piece off but we'll glue that back on in a little bit and there we go that's just nicely sort of dangling in a nice position, giving us some nice remove before flight tags. Uh, probably go off and sort of do it on 
Um, I like to do it on each and every landing gear. I like to do it on the end of our arrestor hook here as well, because you normally see them on there. Um, look at some reference photos, see where else they'll be dangling. You also kind of find them in the cockpit itself, so we could probably put a few in there. And then, um, I've just got to go off camera, sort of put the last bit of weapons on, the last couple of um, move before flight tags, and we are basically done. The last bit really is we've got a few sort of navigation lights. So there's a couple of these. And I've got to be really, really careful because, you know, as you can see, it's quite easy to snap things off now. A um, couple of navigation lights and stuff. Simple, you know, it's like red and green. And what I like to do is come in with a little bit of gloss, paint it on top of that and it gives it that sort of illusion of being like glass or something like that. Um, and that is it. This is basically done. Um, just a little sort of note, <coughs> excuse me, with this on the canopy. Now when it comes to canopies is when they sit on here. Now luckily this kit is an absolute sort of lovely, lovely fit. All right, so if we bring you in, what you can see is we can push this in here and luckily with this one, it holds. It just absolutely holds, absolutely lovely, nice and snug. We can then move this into whatever sort of position we want and it just absolutely fits absolutely lovely. So we haven't got to worry uh, um, about this because the problem is, is this little rod that's sticking out just here, that is resin, right? It's a thin piece of resin that is going to break mega, mega easily. So if this didn't fit quite as snug as this, right? I don't know if you've gone down the route of not using photo etching the resin like I have, right? You're probably going to want um, a little metal rod. I mean, there's all sorts of rods out there, right? I've got little rods here, nice little metal rods. Use that instead of the plastic, especially the resin, right, to hold it up, right? But in this case, I'm lucky, but if you're not, you'll have to cut off a piece of a rod to the same size of whatever plastic you've got with the kit um, and glue that in, and that should hold it um, fairly, fairly nicely. I know sometimes in the past it's been a little bit fiddly, so what I do is I'll sort of bung a little bit of blue tack inside these two points right and then I'll push this in and the blue tack can sort of hold it quite nicely as well if you ever sort of have that problem but I'm just going to finish this and we'll we'll finish up with a final review Two things I just forgot to sort of mention just to finish this off is get out your matte UV varnish just like we use for mattifying this whole thing. Just a nice bit in a colour cup and what we want to do is we want to come in sort of nice and close like we would for pre-shading, post-shading, um, the whole sort of bleaching kind of thing. And we want to spray around these areas where we've done super glue because there's going to be like a little bit of seepage here and there where the super glue is. It's not a big deal apart from the fact that super glue dries to a glossy finish. So you might have like a little mistake, like if you remember I did on the fuel tank, right? You're going to have a little bit of. Um, glossy looking super glue there but you spray some matte over it and you end up with it sort of blending in feathering in and it looks as though there's no super glue there if you've made any little mistakes here and there so there's that to do which I've already done the other thing was is I've been doing the weapons off camera so um, I haven't sort of shown you what colors that I use so for our sidewinders and any sort of air-to-air -air missiles Basically, I've gone off and used our um, H308 boy, uh, Mr. Hobby. Um, the same color we use for the undersides, the same color we use for all our missiles. Then we have like these, the tips and the fins. Now, normally people kind of do them black because they look black, but if you look up close and personal with a, um, say, some photos and stuff, you'll see that they're more of a natural metal finish. So I like to use the Model Masters exhaust, right? Nice sort of color. You could probably use um, other colors. That's basically you have to really sort of dark. Um, really sort of almost black kind of natural metal finish is what you're after for them and that makes them look pretty cool. We have our Mark 81s and our 
Uh, I think they're GBU 10s, right? They are, I do them with an XF 11 by Tamiya. Then uh, we have underneath, you can't quite see it, but there is, um, I think it's an AIM 120 just underneath there. The tip of that, I just do a nice white gray, which is 119. Um, again, people kind of look at them and go, you know, it's white, but it's just a sort of an off white. So this is a really nice color for doing them. Then we have our, uh, sensor as well which is just there that I did uh, again mr. hobby range which is their h305 also a nice color um, and it's one of these things whenever I do stuff like this because I've got f14 f15 f16 over there I try and keep all the weapons the same color so i normally sort of like write it down on a piece of paper or something um and i'll keep that to one side so i know whenever i'm doing like a modern us um aircraft you know all the weapons are going to be the same color so when you sort of put them together on in your display cabinet you know they're all the same color and they're not sort of like one's this color one's that color so it's good to sort of write these things down uh, and sort of keep track of what colors all these weapons are and let's face it that is it it is done and so here she is, all nice and done. We're ready to put this in the display cabinet, maybe do some um, final reveal photos as well to go up on the website. And you know, she's looking really, really, really cool. Let's just tip her upside down so you can sort of see as well. There we go, love this sort of back bit just here where we've got um, this sort of nice sort of weathering that's going down really sort of sets it off very very nicely Let's just put it carefully on its side because this one's turned out to be kind of a bit of a delicate one as well I've already sort of broke a little piece here and there really loving it final conclusion well um, First off the build side of things if you remember on the underside Let's just take this canopy off because I don't want to break it when I put it on um, it's back right if you remember on the canopy section uh, sorry the underside under here was a bit of a pain bit of a fit issue the weight sort of goes together we've had to sort of do a whole load of like um, filling sanding a load of rescribing just in this back area here seems to have the same problem with the revel version as well but you know, you spend the time, you, you sort of take your time with it, um, and it does sort of pay off, because um, I have done these before, and if you don't sort of tackle them right, they can look a bit sort of off in those areas. Other area as well is just here. There is like a join there, and if you don't sort of fill that in and, and sand it and get it all nice and sort of seamless, you, you'll end up with this sort of gap that runs down there but as you can see that is nice and clear as well so uh, apart from those areas I mean really the build side of things hasn't been too bad indeed uh, if you remember we did do the whole um, photo etch cockpit and everything let's just carefully bring this around so you can sort of see um, and that sort of nicely kind of come together as you can see lovely sort of detail just inside there um, looking really cool and the the ejector seat as well All right um, also even with the actual canopy section I don't know where you, where you can see it but we've got all that sort of photo etch just in there and that sort of sets it off really really nice um, for all that photo etch and all this sort of the mirrors and stuff that we've got going on in there really has sort of enhanced that whole section of the model um, sadly, I, you know, the the exhausts, right, let's put this on, let's bring this around, again being very, very careful, the exhaust wasn't too impressed with, in all honesty, if we sort of, again, bring this round, right, because we did have, like, nice resin exhaust, which, if you look on the outside, 
there's not like too much in it i mean i'm not really sort of going wow those are resin exhausts i mean okay if we sort of try and look on the inside i mean you know they do kind of look good on the inside but it's really hard to sort of see in there i don't know if we can sort of maybe see on the top cam maybe all right but you know inside it's kind of nice but it's a little hard to see in there so those resin exhausts i'd i, I wouldn't do them again because in all honesty the what you get in the kit looks pretty much on the outside looks pretty much sort of the same as what it is resin so uh, maybe not go down the resin route although i think you can have them where the exhausts are open which would probably have been better probably more detail and you could probably see it all nicer and better um, but apart from that the cockpit part of it was really really cool uh, i'm really glad i did that so all in all it's been really really cool as for the paint work as well um, in the past i have done a few fa18s and never quite got the color right to be honest with you i used to use like whenever i've done them i've done like um, vallejo colors didn't quite match up but um, ever since i've done the f uh, f14 i've always used for these modern us jets i've always gone ahead and used the the mr hobby range and i've found that their colors are just such a cracking match they just look really really cool you know we've done you know f14 f15 f16 in these the um and the fa 18 has come out really really nice color wise so i'm glad i've gone down that route and not sort of use something a little bit easy like vallejo because in all honesty mr hobby range i don't like using their paints but their color matches are really really cool you can have all sorts of problems with them they can crack quite quite easily so you do have to make sure you leave the drawing times um, um uh, enough drawing time in between doing different colors and all this kind of stuff so it, it is problematic like that but the colors are just spot on um so i'm kind of glad i've gone down that route and i think i've got the weathering just just right it's just you're just enough to sort of bring out that flavor but at the same time it's not too overpowering uh, and it is supposed to be an aircraft carrier so you can go that little uh, an aircraft based um carrier based um, aircraft so you can go that little bit farther with you where we're in um, the streakings have come out rather rather nice as well again i don't think i've gone too far with them i um, don't know well you're picking up on camera because you know you don't want them too in your face but they just kind of lightly come out as these nice little streaks so all in all i am happy with that hopefully you've learned a hell of a lot from watching this series of the fa18 now episodes one and this final episode normally goes up on youtube as a nice freebie so you know if you haven't seen this whole series there's like about 50 episodes of building this so there's tons and tons of information in there um, tons and tons you can learn about how to build this and stuff so um, if you're not a subscribing member go check out the genesis models website over there you know you can sort of subscribe you can then sort of watch the whole 50 episodes of this and learn how to do it as well as tons and tons of other videos um, on the genesis models website tons of step by steps rapid video builds tutorials you know inbox reviews i mean i think my last count was about 800 and something videos we have on our website site so um you know everything's there if you want to learn anything to do with modeling so um yeah been a fantastic build i'm hoping you've enjoyed it I've enjoyed it, um, so what I'm going to do now is go take some nice final reveal photos of this and leave you with them. So until next time, my name is Bob Waldron, this is Genesis Models, and I hope you've enjoyed.